In this video, we're going to learn the washer method and do our first example. So the setup here is we have two functions, f of x equals 2x and g of x equals 1, and two vertical lines at x equals 1 and x equals 2. And together, they trap some area. And so what we're going to do is take that area and rotate it around the x-axis. And when we do that, we, wound up, we wind up with a solid shape that looks something like this. And notice that there's a hole in this shape because there's a gap between this area and the axis of rotation. And so when we rotate around the x-axis, that gap leaves a hole in the solid. So the question becomes, what is the volume of this solid with a hole in it? And the answer is actually quite easy and intuitive, and it leads us to the washer method. All right, so what is the answer? Well, the answer is this. We're going to pretend that there is no hole in this solid shape. So we're, we're going to um, kind of just remove the hole, find the volume of this entire solid with no hole in it, and then we're going to subtract the volume of the hole. It turns out we can find out what that, the volume of that hole would be. That hole is just a cylinder sitting there. So we take the entire thing, and in fact, let's look at this view, this entire thing. If we kind of look at this transparent view, you can see the entire thing with that solid cylinder sitting inside of it. So if we take the entire solid with no hole, subtract the cylinder out of it, what we wind up with is exactly the, the solid with a hole in it. Okay, so that's the idea in pictures. Now let's talk more about the math of actually doing this. So to do this, we're going to pretend that there's no hole, and in, in the 2D picture, that looks like this. We're just going to take this entire area with no gap in it and rotate that around the x-axis. And that is just the regular old disk method. We have a formula for that. We've been doing that in the past several videos many times. And the disk method formula is this, the integral of pi r of x squared dx. This will tell us the volume of the entire solid with no hole in it. So I'll just write entire here. So again, that would be um, this solid. Right? No, no gaps in the area, no hole in the solid. So this, this is a formula for the entire solid, for the volume of the entire solid. And then we can look at just doing another disk method, but this time only on this area in blue. And again, we've done that plenty of times. That's the integral of a to b pi times, and this time I'm going to use a little r of x because the radius here is going to be much smaller for this, for this area, right? There's little r of x. That radius is going to be much smaller than if we were looking at the radius, um, say, out to the entire this here would be big R of X. That's the radius for the um, entire solid. Little r of X is the radius for that small piece. So anyways, the idea is that it's smaller, so we're going to use a little r there. Okay, and this is a formula that gives us a volume for the whole. So again, just to be clear, it's the volume of that cylinder. And all that we have to do now is just subtract these two volumes. If we took, again, if we took the volume of the entire thing, subtract the volume of that inner cylinder, we will get the volume of, of the solid we're looking for with a hole in it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. But, but before we actually uh, solve this problem out, let me just say that doing this subtraction leads to a very nice formula, which is known as the washer method. And it's the integral from a to b of pi times the outer radius, or the larger radius, minus the inner radius, or the smaller radius. And oftentimes, just for notational simplicity, we'll just pull the pi out. Because it's a constant multiple, we can do that. And just write it like this. OK, and this is the disk method. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the washer method. This is the formula for the washer method, and this works when we're rotating around the x-axis or anything parallel to the x-axis, so any horizontal line. Okay, so that's, that's our formula. And you should think of this as the outer radius or the larger radius, and this is the inner radius or the smaller radius. And notice, if, if you just pretend that the smaller radius is 0, 
you're just back, like this would be minus a zero here, you're exactly back to the disk method formula, right? If there's, in other words, if there's no hole in your shape, then this, this, this piece is zero, or if r of x is zero, this whole thing is zero, there is no hole, then you're just back to the disk method for the entire shape. So really you can think of the washer method as a generalization of the disk method. And you really don't even have to think about the disk method anymore. Just think of the washer method where sometimes you might have a zero radius here. That might help you organize your thoughts in the future. But okay, enough blabbing, let's go on to solve this problem. All right, so if you've been following along with uh, my videos on the disk method, then you'll know that I like to do these problems in steps. And the first step is draw a sketch, which we've already have uh, very nicely drawn for us here in this particular problem. In future videos, we'll do more sketching. The second step is decide on a method, but we've already you already know this is a, a washer method video. Later on, we'll have to do some deciding, and those will be harder problems. And then once you decide on a method, you should always write the formula down for that method. And of course, this is washer method and we just learned the formula. So this is the formula we will be working with in this problem. And there's some things to fill in. We need to know the bounds of integration and the outer and inner radius. So that's gonna be the next steps is to find those things. Okay, so step three is find A and B. And in this case, uh, in, with the washer method, or when we're rotating around the x-axis, the, the A and B bounds are always going to be the leftmost and rightmost points of the area, which in this case are very easy. They've been giving to us as A equals 1 and B equals 2. Those are just the vertical lines that are trapping the area. That's the leftmost and rightmost point of the area that's being trapped. Okay, and then we are going to have step 4, which is find big R of X, the outer radius, and little r of X, the inner radius. Okay, so let's go back to this sketch and let me actually clean it up for a minute by taking out these pieces. This is the actual area that we were originally rotating. And to find the outer and inner radius of this area, well, it's already labeled for us because we, we went through this um, just to set up the washer method. But in general, what you wanna do is you wanna pick some x value, some pretend x value, and draw lines from the x value out to the outer edge of the area, the farthest edge of the area, and that's going to give you your, your big R of x, and then you're going to want to draw a line to the inner edge of the area, or the closer edge of that area, and that's going to give you your inner radius, or your smaller radius, your little r of x. And so in this case, big R of X, the distance from the X axis to that outer edge of the area, well, that is just F of X, right? Because for any X value, F of X is going to tell us the height of that line. And that's exactly the distance from the X axis out to this point. Okay, so the upper radius is F of X and the inner radius is just G of X, which in this case is one. If that was too fast or too confusing for you, I highly recommend that you go back and watch the videos on the disk method where we really talk in depth about finding the, uh, a radius. But in this case, it's pretty easy. R of X, big R of X, that outer radius is F of X, which is 2X. And little r of X is that inner radius, which is G of X, which is equal to 1. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces. So the very last step here is just pl uh, plug into the formula and solve an integral. Okay, so we have the integral, uh, pi times the integral of a is one uh, to b, which is two, and then the outer radius, which is two x, and we gotta square that, minus, and the inner radius is just one, we gotta square that dx. Okay, so the problem is basically over. In this video, we learned the washer method and we set a problem up with the washer method. The remainder to solve this integral is really just busy work. And we'll go through the work to do that, but I want you to know that the hard part is over. All right, so let's take the couple of minutes it will take to solve this out. So let's see here. This is uh, pi times the integral from 1 to 2. 2x two squared is 4 uh, 2x all squared is going to be 4x squared minus 1 squared, which is just 1, dx. And now this is an integral 
uh, power rule or antiderivative power rule. And so we have 4x cubed over 3 minus x. And we have to evaluate this from 1 to 2. So let's go ahead and plug in. So this is going to be uh, plugging in 2. We're going to have 4 times 2 cubed over 3 minus 2. Then minus, and then we have to plug in 4 times 1 cubed over 3 minus 1. And now we're going to simplify this. So we have, uh, you know, this is 8 times 4, which is 32 over 3. And then we have 4 times 1 over 3, so this is 4 over 3. So we'll combine those terms. And then we have a minus 2 and a minus minus 1. So we'll combine those terms. So let's see, this is pi times, let's see, this was 32 over 3 minus 4 over 3 is 28 over 3. And then minus 2 minus minus 1, so that's minus 2 plus 1, is just minus 1. Okay, and then we got to uh, do a little bit more simplifying here. So let's bring it up here to give us some room. So this is pi times, if we put 1 over 3, that's 3 over 3. So that's 28 over 3 minus 3 over 3. Subtract, and the final answer here is 25 pi over 3. Okay, so that is the volume of that solid that we started with, with the hole in it. And we did that using the washer method. So let's go back up and just double check that we understand that. Using the washer method, we found the volume of that solid with the hole in it. Okay, in future videos, we will do some more washer methods, we'll do more advanced examples, and then we'll move on to shell method. And, uh, and then we'll also do problems where we really have to decide on a method and set a problem up from scratch. Those will be the harder problems, and we'll get into those. Okay, see you then.